So I've been a freelance marketer for three years now, and here's exactly what I would do if I could go back in time to my first year to make the most out of my time and earn the most amount of money. So I was stuck in the $3,000 to $6,000 range for quite some time, I would say for a year and a half, and I could have fully avoided it if I was clued in on these things. So let's just get into it. So the first thing I always talk about this is consistent outreach or personal branding in general. So sending cold emails or looking through gigs on Upwork and applying to the ones that seem fitting to you or just posting a content on your personal or your like personal brand channels. So whatever platform you choose, it doesn't have to be short form video or long form video. It could be LinkedIn, Twitter, anything along those lines is so, so, so important even when you're not looking for clients because there is always a possibility that things will happen. A business will burn down and they, they won't need a copywriter anymore or a client will just decide to work with someone else or just so many things can happen and you wanna make sure that you have an insurance plan basically. And your insurance plan is this outreach, this relationships that you build. I always tell people that the personal brand is best. I'm consistently getting work sent my way without having to even send outreach, but it's not like it's just coming to me out of nowhere. I'm building my personal brand. I'm I'm posting on social media about the work that I do. And because of this, people are coming to me for my expertise. But you can get the same effect without having a personal brand through doing cold outreach. When it comes to cold outreach, consistency is key and the money is in the follow-ups. This is something that I wasn't clued into in my first year as a copywriter, that sending one email is simply not enough. Sending two emails is simply not enough. Sending three emails is simply not enough. You want to consistently stagger and send out emails with value to the clients you wanna work with until they tell you no and or tell you yes, period. Like I have copywriter friends who sent emails for eight months and then got huge $15,000 retainers because of this. And it's not like they're just sending cold emails with memes basically begging for someone to give them money. They're providing value and sharing their skills and using their skill sets as a copywriter to keep the clients engaged. And the reason sometimes it can take so long is just because they might not need the services at the moment. But when once they realize, oh, I need a copywriter, there's this guy that has been sending me emails for eight months who actually has really good work. Let me hit him up and boom, you've, you've made a client now. But you will not be top of mind if you're not consistently posting on a personal brand channel or sending outreach. So even when you have your clients, don't feel like, okay, my job is done now, I'm fine, I'm just gonna wake up every day, write the one email that I have to write and go back to bed. This is your chance to build up your credibility and relationships and put yourself out there more through outreach in whichever way you choose. Something else that I wish I knew, which actually I didn't know this, but I just didn't really take in this valuable information, is stop wasting time on your website and any other bits like branding in terms of like visuals and doing a photo shoot and all that stuff. And although I do think this is important, it kind of sounds like a contradiction because I talk about, you know, the importance of good personal brand so often, but you don't need to go all out and like before you make money, like some sort of income from copywriting, you shouldn't be investing your time into creating like the an aesthetic looking Wix website. Just get clients, build a portfolio, do copywriting. And then once you start making money, pay someone to build the website for you in the way that you want, want to. I think especially as women, we get caught up in this because I spent hours, when I say hours and days, probably like two weeks straight over like the Christmas period, building out a Wix website that didn't even look as good. I, I was glad I had a website because people from my TikTok were able to go click on the link and book through there. I could have just put my email in my bio or type form and have people work with me that way and I would have gotten the same results. I'm like 90% confident I would have gotten the same amount of traction and client inbounds without having spent hours on your website because it just causes so much stress. Even like doing photo shoots and taking photos, I had the ugly like white background iPhone selfie LinkedIn photo for years. I did not invest into a proper photo shoot until literally this year, which again, I don't think has truly impacted me 
that much more than the work that I've done, the money that I've made businesses, the relationships that I've built. Go out there and get clients through doing good copy. Set, be valuable, send cold outreach emails that are so good, even if they don't need a copywriter, they save it because they know in the future they wanna work with you. Or go out there and post content that's so good that clients save your videos and reach out to a year later when they start a business. Something that just recently happened to me. Go out there and once you get your client, give them the best copy possible that converts and makes them money so you can now say I've done XYZ for this company and I can do this for you so you can get other clients and then take that money and send it to someone on Upwork to build the website that you want. Don't spend all this time on building a website. And also on that line, on reading a million copywriting books and watching a million videos for four months straight before you venture out into getting your first client. I'm telling you, if you understand the basic principles of copywriting, you watch one YouTube video, maybe you read one book, you're good to go. There is nothing more that education online or reading a book, more books can give you than the education that you can get from just doing copy. I get so many people always DMing me, oh, Danae, like I want resources. I've been you know, studying for like four months. When I understood the basics of copywriting, AKA persuasion and understanding, okay, this is the purpose of copy. This is how, for the most part, copy is written. I read one book and I watched like one free online course. I immediately went out and got my first client. And yeah, maybe the work wasn't as well, but I was getting paid cheap rates because of this and learning as I went. I learned the most when I worked with clients and I was in the trenches doing copy. You were never going to break through in the industry if you just sit there looking for more information because you don't feel ready. You have to go through the phase where you feel a little bit like an imposter. You feel like you're not ready. I can even call myself a copywriter. You have to just go through that, go for it, do copy in that phase to get to where you want to. Stop thinking so hard about it. Go on Upwork, take an entry level gig where someone's asking you to write copy for their small business and learn from this experience. Work in an agency that has 10 clients and they're making you write 15 emails a day for like super low rates. This is stuff that I did that was really valuable to me because it allowed me to learn fast. And even reaching that $6,000 mark a month as a copywriter in the first year and a half is pretty big. And I was only able to do that because I put myself out there when I felt like an imposter and was learning on the spot. And it's okay to be honest with people. If you meet an agency guy and he says, okay, I, I want to, you know, I do want someone with experience. Tell him this is the experience I have. I've studied. I've read the greats. I have a spec portfolio. Here it is. And I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to invest in the time to study on. If you have a course for me, I'm willing to read through that course on the weekend and do these emails in the week. A lot of businesses will give you free courses and stuff like that because they want you to execute and do good work. So everyone makes more money. So don't be afraid to push through those barriers when you feel like an imposter. Another mistake you don't want to make in your first year is investing all your money into things that are just used as materialistic things or trips or things like that. Now, I started freelancing because I wanted a lifestyle business in a way that I could have autonomy over my life and live my life in a way that allowed me some freedom. However, in your first year, you want to compound your growth by investing in your business and your skill set. So the more skilled you are as a freelancer, the more money will be paid for less time, which will eventually give you that freedom in excess, right? Because then you could also create passive income streams and do other little things here and there to excel your growth. But if you start making a chunk of money and you go buy a watch, you go on a trip, you spend it on just stupid stuff, you're not going to get that compound growth, right? So although I did invest money into courses, I would say in like our mentorship programs a year and a half into it, I wish I had done it earlier. I just still had this kind of poor mentality where it's like, you're afraid to let go of the money. So I was just immediately putting the money towards my student loans and all that, which isn't bad. I paid off my student loans now and I, I didn't go spend it on stupid things but I didn't also I didn't invest it into a mentor until a year and a half in the first chunk of money that I paid for a mentor it was a three-month kind of cohort thing it was six thousand dollars which I know sounds crazy but I was able to triple my income within that three-month period which 
is a steal. It was literally a steal. Thankfully, I had friends who kind of pushed me into doing that. And if I hadn't had their perspective and realized how valuable investing in mentorship and coaching was, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today. And I think a lot of people, granted, are scared to invest into mentors and coaches online, which I completely understand. I can make a video actually on my criteria on who I invest in and what I'm willing to spend on and why when it comes to courses and mentorship and all that stuff. But anyways, aside from that, do not waste your first year, the first chunks of money you get on stupid stuff. The money you invest doesn't have to be specifically to better your skills as a copywriter. It could be a sales course to give you more confidence and ability to structure your sales calls so you can make the most out of it and increase the amount of people that say yes to your offers. Or it could be just an offer package course, or it could be a course that's well-rounded in all three of those areas, right? I think it's very important to invest in yourself in that way, especially in your first year to really fast track your journey. Another mistake you don't want to make is not creating SOPs and workflows. Now, although you don't have any employees as a freelancer, you will make your life so much easier if you have processes for things. So for example, setting up a QuickBooks for accounting and invoicing and that stuff. I use Jot Forms for contracts where you can easily, or Panda Docs, you can easily just send a contract out. So I have a standard template. I just switch a couple things here and there, send it off in a client, and that just takes like maybe five to 10 minutes of my time. I used HoneyBook in my first year, which I think was great. I don't use it now because my structure of my offers are changed and HoneyBook is not as useful. But if you're doing a lot of one-off projects or even retainer work where your clients are really involved in the process, HoneyBook could be a very valuable tool to speed up your workflow because the amount of time that a lot of freelancers spend on admin can really add up. But if you create like maybe notion boards, SOPs, standard operating procedures, so steps on how to do things and you have your formulas, you have your bookmarks set up, you know, okay, when I sign a new client after a discovery call, I send over the contract to their email, boom, boom, boom. I, I know exactly what link I need to send them to get the payment. Everything's all set up. I duplicate their portal on Notion, send it over to them, and it's super easy. It maybe takes me 20 minutes, whereas before it would take me so much longer because I would have to like create a completely new thing every time. And that takes away from the time you can actually be making money. So you want to make sure that you don't sleep on investing, on developing processes that make your life easier and save you time so you can put your, your time into making more money. And the last thing, which I should have put at number one, is to do not make the mistake of undercharging in your first year as a copywriter, please. I've gone through this for us, so you don't have to make my mistake. I charged $200 for work that I would probably charge $2,500 for now. And at the time it took me probably way longer than it would take me to do now. It's so easy, especially as women to undercharge as freelancers, because especially if you had a nine to five and you're really stuck in the mindset of my hourly rate and da 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 da. As a freelancer, you should be charging for the value that you're providing rather than how long it takes you, especially though as a copywriter, because our work can directly impact a business, especially if you're doing maybe email copywriting or writing ad scripts or ad copy like this work can or writing landing pages or funnel copy this work can directly make a business triple what they've paid you so it's important to understand this and charge accordingly don't waste time charging low rates because you feel scared have some audacity have some confidence have some grit go out there rule of thumb if you share your rate with the client and they immediately say yes you could have charged a bit more you want to have some tension you want to have some back and forth some deliberation over your rates. This is a rule of thumb. And I'm not gonna say that it's all sunshine and rainbows and I can go on a sales call and be like, yep, I charge $10,000 for this. No, it's still difficult for me. I understand how useless it is to undercharge because now you're spending your precious time where you could be getting paid more doing work that you're getting underpaid for when you could just be using that time to find a better client or a client that will pay you for what your work is valued for. And in the end, increase your quality of life. Also, whenever I've taken on a client that was paying me a very low rate, they were always the most stressful client. Always the client that was just, that had the most feedback, was the most reasonable, and just not a pleasure to work with, right? Usually the clients that pay you what you're worth as a copywriter are the easier ones to work with, which at the end of the day is what we all want. We want everyone to be happy, right? So hopefully this video was valuable. Let me know if you have any questions or maybe there's something I mentioned that you're struggling with now in your first year that you want me to talk about. And yeah.